it's just been an amazing experience. It, it's, you know, you're always afraid of the unknown in life, and sometimes when you step into that, you get some of the greatest gifts. If I had to judge the future on the page. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, you take risks in life or you, or you make changes in your life and you throw in the dice. And I feel like rolling the dice on this has turned out pretty amazing. There's been so many amazing people that have come into our life that are just creative, uh, starting with the band. I feel very fortunate to not only have had the opportunity to share the music with the fans, but to also be doing it with all these very special people that have come into our life over the course of the project. You know, we kind of vetted a handful of producers and and Vance Powell. Well, just hearing, you know, anyone I can work with, El King, Jack White, and Chris Stapleton. He's a very musical person. So, um, you know, phone calls were made, and the next thing you know, we're in the studio, and we absolutely made the right choice, because he is a badass, and just cracked the whip and kept us moving, and we've got some amazing tracks in two days. Start a little bit later. Yeah, so so to so give it a give it a beat. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's cool right there. That's, you know, everybody wants the same thing. We all want to make music that people want to hear. And so, um, sometimes I have recorded bands, uh, and usually rock bands, like, you know. And, you know, they'll, they'll play it a couple times and be like, yeah, man, that's cool, it's great, it's good enough. And, you know, maybe, maybe it's good enough for you. It's not good enough for me. Let's, let's keep going. Let's work on it. And always those people who push back against that later go, oh, thanks. Um, you know, so it was great. I mean, everybody was cool. And, uh, uh, you know, when we went over to rehearsal, a couple of the arrangement ideas uh, I'm very happy with. There's something so incredibly magical about today because it's it's he's literally the reason that I sing the way I do. I count the fallen tears that fall before my eyes. Seem like a thousand years since we broke the ties. Chemistry when they sing together and they sing so well together is is pretty awesome and there's a really obvious respect between the two that uh, 
you know, it, it's cool. If you ever watch them sing that song together, they're both really huge, they have a really huge presence on stage and they're really commanding the front people. And uh, you can sit and watch them just stare each other down. Like they're trying to win a staring contest, like they're just, just they're owning it and just singing right through each other. And it's, it's really, really cool. It's really, really special. It, you lose yourself a little bit when you sing with Tom. You you step outside yourself, and it's not necessarily you're just singing a duet anymore. It's you're showing your influence on your sleeve, and you're 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 wearing your heart on the outside. And he brings that out, you know, of of me. And um, but it's we. I, I look at videos too of some of our past performances and even all the guys in my band say like y you don't make that face when we perform <laughs> like what face i blacked out <laughs> that night we got on the bus and i said i don't know how i don't know when but that has got to happen at some point thankfully it just came together perfectly I talked to Tony, and Tony was like, "Well, what would you think about you guys doing a song together on these on these shows?" So that led to Lizzie and I ending up on the phone, and we were talking. It was the first time we talked, and kind of um, kicked around, you know, that thought. And I suggested, "What would you think about doing Nobody's Fool?" And she said, "You know, she would really love to do that." So that's the one that we picked, and had a couple conversations and some texts about how we'd arrange the vocals and stuff and how to do it and we just ran through it at sound check the first of the first show that we did together it just felt amazing you know it felt great from from the get-go the emotion that I felt watching that because you have two generations here you know, it's like it's like the torch being passed, but not only that, there's so many similarities and there was just just such a connection and you know, I don't get goosebumps very very easy. <laughs> and there was just such an amazing chemistry. You know, meeting her that day it just felt like an, an instant connection, almost feel I describe it like this long lost family member that I didn't know that I had or something, you know? Um, and then standing on the side of the stage that night, it was the first time that I had seen her perform live. And Savannah and I were standing there and I just, you know, I turned to Savannah and I said, you know, she's been so vocal about um, me as an influence. And I just feel proud right now watching someone that talented. I was proud not only to be, have her, um, you know, citing my name as an influence, uh, the fact that she's uh, so musically and vocally talented, but also as a person that she is, you know, Lizzie's so humble. I mean, for somebody with that talent and the, the you know, she's so humble about it. And that's, it's, it's rare, you know. Keep turning you down. You're getting louder and louder. Yeah, I'm um, open oh, no, up. I, I didn't even have you in the first. <laughs> Sound good? Some good box. stuff in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple spots on there.
She's happy. She's happy yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah she, she sounds, sounds great. great. She sounds great. She's like, okay. Yeah. Hey, vibrate some new places. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Oh, with the, the this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. On, yeah. Or whatever. No, she sounds great. Yeah. That works. I think. I think between this, we got to take. If there's something we don't have, a I mean, I feel like we have a band take for sure. Okay. If there's anything that I find in here that sucks, I'll have you punch it. Yeah, sure. Okay. But there's we have six takes. Sure. And six takes laid in, I can find it. Yeah. I like how it works. Before I ever started um, singing with Tom, one of my favorite artists was Lizzie Hale. I love Hailstorm. Um, their first record that they put out, it's just, I don't know, it, was, it really struck a chord with me. It was like a young generation doing the old school rock and roll, but like with a new twist. And I've really admired her as an artist and a songwriter and her attitude and her vocal ability is just like so amazing. And like I got to sing this close with her today and it was just really fun. I can't believe it happened. Nobody's fool, nobody's fool. What are you, what are That's, you that is what, yeah. well, it was oh, what I was what doing, but, singing in but the with, with first but with Tom, it was, I was singing, because we were trading off, I was singing the melody, nobody's his fool, melody, went in between the spaces. Fool. Yeah. So then I, then I go up to harmony. So it's like, yeah, so you were singing the melody and then harmony. Melody, harmony. So, what if she stayed on the melody? Stay That's on the exactly melody. what I'm saying. Stay on the melody. That's a good idea. Okay. Stay on the melody, so it's melody, harmony, harmony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Let's do that. It's like a big three-part Does it matter part um, where we stand sonically? Which one is the loudest? I... In the middle, in the back. <laughs> what? Like, in other words, go in the middle, like you guys... like. Mm -hmm. I'm probably the softest. Okay. Well, come on. They're probably okay. the loudest. Come on, we'll figure it out. I'm going to go ahead and stand in here and mix you manually. Okay. <laughs> Nobody move. I want some soup. Oh, hey, sorry. <laughs> sorry. That was just for the camera. For the You know, it was funny earlier today, Lizzie said when she was in the room with Tom, it made her super nervous. And then I talked to Tom later and he was talking about how nervous he was about working with Lizzie because they're both so good. So I think they both set the bar high for each other and it was pretty cool to see the influence. You know, the influence, first of all, that Tom had on her as well as the influence that she's, you know, She's making Tom work harder now. I, you know, it, life has a weird way of throwing my stuff at you. I am not only so impressed by the the power that he still has, you know, vocally, and obviously he's such he's such an underrated guitar player. He's so amazing. Um, but I'm even more so impressed by the 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 person that he is and the demeanor. He, you know, treats everybody with so much respect. He didn't have to give me the time of day, you know, but he did. And I greatly appreciate it because here's this guy that literally changed my life, you know, it, it coursed it towards the better. And now he's he's continually being my inspiration. They're, you know, Tom and his entire camp are people that you just want to hang out with all the time and, and they make you feel like a better person. And make you feel like a better musician, a better person, you know, uh, um, like, like you have something special, you know, about yourself. And, uh, that's what, that's what this whole thing is all about. That's what rock and roll is about. And, um, you know, we're not trying to save the world. We're just trying to, <laughs> we just want to rock, man. And, and, uh, take it one day at a time and lift each other up because that's all, that's all you need to do. Day two. Day two. Day two. The help from my friends was um, suggested actually by Savannah. 
for us to do as an encore song the first year we went out touring behind the record. And to be honest, um, you know, what she suggested us doing was our kind of taking the Joe Cocker version of the song and making it our own. And my first reaction, honestly, was, I'm not touching Joe Cocker, <laughs> because that's, that's like sacred ground, and, you know, I just, you know, that's like a, an idol and a hero to me. Um, so I just felt like, you know, I don't, I don't know if, if I can pull that off. So we, we got into rehearsal and we started messing around with it, and it actually, it actually felt very natural for me. And the band was approaching it, even though it was the same arrangement. You know, he changed the melody and the feel of it so much from the Beatles version that, um, you know, we were we were approaching it the same way that he did a groove and melodically. But the band was playing it with a lot more intensity, and it kind of matched my vocal, and uh, it just it just felt really. It felt right, as much as it kind of scared me to step, no, that felt like sacred ground. You know, we initially tried it out in rehearsal once. We said, hey, you know, this, this might be a fun song to do. And we had all learned our parts and we went in and we're like, okay, let's play it. So we, we were at rehearsal hall at Soundcheck and we played through it and then uh, boom, and we finished it and all of a sudden we hear this knock on the door and we're like, who's that? And we opened the door and there was like these three guys standing outside and they said, hey, we just wanted to find out who was in here. That was unbelievable. And we're like, wow, you know, maybe this is working. We were trying it, and it it really just started taking on its own thing after playing it live, and it's just kind of kept evolving. And it's very powerful, very meaningful. The whole lyric, uh, this band's like a family, so yeah. That, and it coming in and doing it, recording it, I, I was really wondering what it was going to be like, if it would take away from any of that magic. That, it's all there. It's, it's, it's killer. Everybody in the band put their own stamp on this. When the band was put together, the solo record was already done. And so essentially we were learning the songs off that record and trying to recreate them as accurately as possible. And then trying to take the Cinderella songs that would be tied into the set because of all the obvious hits and do those justice too and play them up to snuff. And, but this song I feel like was the first opportunity that the band got initially to play something and make it our own. I'm excited, I can't wait to hear it. I'll be, uh, I'll be the first person buying a copy <laughs> the day it comes out just so I can put it in my car and crank it up and say, listen to this shit, motherfuckers.
got a couple little things on us. Uh, yeah, Vance, sure amazing, brother. I mean, that's yeah. just what it should sound like. Now it's been two years of playing it on the road, and we've perfected it, and um, and man, it's it's really powerful. <laughs> Today's day three, you know, and uh, you know we're we're figuring each other out. You have more than one person who are focused on the same goal, you know. Like Tom said the other night, he's like, you know, we want someone to put the needle down and then pick the needle up and put it right back down again. And and that's what that's the great thing about music. When music happens and moves you, that's what you can make happen. change now on the solo is great. We've got oh, yeah. the, the dynamic built from my neck position, the low one down, uh -huh. Tony comes and screams. Oh, nice. I'm gonna record every every one of them. So here we go. Here you go. It's sharper than that. There you go. There it is. Yeah. There's your note. There you go. And you can hit it, and I can fade it in. Trust me. to get to my hands and it stopped like yep. right here. I just watched it hit the ground and I was like, oh God, it's done. And the only thing that happened was 
the, I mean, because you know how fragile these are. Yeah, yeah. The uh, rosewood lifted up, separated a little bit from the, the neck. I, mean, I was so lucky. Nothing cracked. Uh, they just had to glue that back down. Unbelievable. Yeah, please, please don't bring that back out. That makes my heart. <laughs> now, I, don't want, I don't want anything to do with it. John Arena stage is you what? It's 40 kind of like, oh, yeah. So we were throwing, he'd throw it, it, it would hit me about two thirds of the way across good, the stage. So 30 foot throw. Yeah. So 30 foot throw. Yeah, you you can leave that at home. I don't want it. I thought twice about it. And when he stepped on the cord and it fell, we just got it fixed and kept throwing it. Yeah, of course you did. No way. You know, so yep. you know, meet you all. Know, easy, man. Be I'm safe. Get together well. sometime. Yeah, I'm just gonna meet you. The accused are working. I walk with you until I so. I didn't know going into it how it was gonna be playing with the guy from Cinderella. Frankly, it has gone better than any of those. Anything I could have hoped for. Pretty awesome. So, you know, a whole lot of greatness, great energy, great, great poops. It's like a, a marriage in a family, you know, you have to be able to get along with these people and it just felt right in that sense from, from day one. When we're getting ready to go out and do a run, I know personally it, it's a hard feeling for me to describe, but when I step on that bus every time when we're getting to go out, it's, it's just a feeling like I can't describe. It, and I think everybody feels, it's a real happy place for everyone in the band when we get together and go do what we do. A demolition gun on rain With a pocket full of jacks Such a whore It's not enough If all she do is bang Then I just ain't gonna hang Such a bore It's not enough It's not enough It's not enough Oh!